Welcome to Chemistry Not Mystery. You can also visit my website chemistrynotmystery.com. This is the fourth lecture of alkene, and today we are going to study what is the peroxide effect. Try to answer this question. Choose the correct statement for the following set of reactions, and these are the options. A and B both are the same, but C and D are different. A and B both are different, but C and D are the same. All are different, or none of the above. If you are not able to answer this question, watch this video till the end, and by the end you will be able to answer it. So let's start with the peroxide effect. It is also known as Karaj effect. It is governed by the anti-Marconi Kopf rule. According to that rule, in presence of peroxide, nucleophile, that is negative part of your reagent, gets attached to the sp2 carbon that is bonded to the greater number of hydrogen. It is just opposite to the Marconi Kopf rule. So let's see. When you add HBr to propene, what will happen? First of all, you have to split it in electrophile and nucleophile. So HBr will split into H plus and Br minus. When you add HBr to propene in absence of peroxide, Negative part of the reagent goes to the sp2 carbon that has less number of hydrogens. So, Br- will get attached to the middle carbon and you will get CH2, CH, CH3. Br will get attached to the middle carbon and hydrogen will get attached to the terminal one. And that's how you will get Marconi Kopf product. But when you add HBr to propene in presence of peroxide, what will happen? Negative part that is your nucleophile will get attached to the sp2 carbon that has more number of hydrogens. That means Br will get attached to the terminal carbon and you will get CH2. CH, CH3, Br will get attached to the terminal carbon and hydrogen will get attached to the middle carbon and that's how you will get anti marconic product. So how this peroxide affect the mode of reaction and affect the product? Now come to the reason for the peroxide effect. In peroxide, oxygen oxygen single bond is responsible for the whole change in the reaction. Let's see how. This single bond oxygen, single bond oxygen, it is so weak that it breaks homolytically by the exposure of heat. So, when this bond breaks homolytically, it will form peroxide free radical. HO free radical. And this peroxide free radical initiate another homolytic bond fission in HBr. So you will get Br free radical. Then this HBr is split homolytically. This peroxide combines with H free radical and forms H. O single bond H and Br free radical. Now this Br free radical initiate another homolytic bond fission and alkene CH2 double bond CH single bond CH3. So this Br free radical triggers another homolytic bond fission in alkene and results another free radical. This Br free radical, it may combine 
this Br free radical may combine with CH2 free radical or CH free radical. So let's see what will happen. When this Br combines with CH2 free radical, it will result in the formation of CH2 single bond CH free radical CH3. Br will combine with CH2 free radical or it may combine with CH free radical and results in the formation of CH2 free radical CH CH3. Br will combine here. So, in both the cases, you will get different free radical. If Br combines with CH2 free radical, it results in the formation of secondary free radical. While in this case, it results in the formation of primary free radical. And you know, secondary free radical is more stable. It is more stable than the primary free radical. So, this secondary free radical will take part in the further reaction. And this secondary free radical CH2, Br, CH free radical, CH3, will combine with hydrogen free radical and results in the formation of CH2, Br, CH, CH3 and results in the formation of CH2, Br, CH2, CH3 and that's how you will get anti of product. So, this whole reaction completes in three steps. First step is the initiation step in which Br free radical is formed. Br free radical is formed. In the second step, in the second step, this Br free radical generates another free radical that is alkyl free radical. And in the final step, the termination step in which the alkyl free radical combines with hydrogen free radical and gives you the product. So, this whole mechanism is known as free radical mechanism. This free radical mechanism completes in three steps. Let's summarize it again. First step is the initiation step. This step involves the generation of halogen free radical. Second step is the propagation. It involves the addition of halogen free radical to alkene. And the final and third step is the termination step that involves the addition of hydrogen free radical to alkyl free radical. So, this is the mechanism that occur in presence of peroxide. So, why does peroxide affect the addition of HBr only? Let's see why. First step is the initiation step. It may be endothermic or exothermic. That means heat may absorb during the reaction or it may evolve during the reaction. Second step is the propagation step. This step also may be exothermic or endothermic. But the final step, that is the termination step, is a strictly endothermic reaction. And only in case of HBr, these two steps are exothermic. The initiation and propagation steps. While in other case, or in other halo acids, these two steps are not exothermic. So that's why only HPR has enough energy to complete the third step, that is endothermic step. That's why HPR follows free radical pathway in presence of peroxide, while other halo acids do not.
because they do not have enough energy to complete the third endothermic step. Now I hope you can answer this question and you have to post your answer in the comment box. And don't forget to like and share this video. If you have any doubt, you can post them in the comment box. And please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get a notification. You can also join my telegram channel or follow me on twitter or instagram. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. Stay safe.